The Prophet Hood. The Ud tribe. A new life began on earth after the flood. The number of people increased like before, and the earth became just like it was before. The families which spread around the Arabian Peninsula built new cities, building and making gardens and orchards wherever they went. During this period, one of the Prophet Noah's grandchildren, by the name of Ud, settled down in the south of Yemen with his family. Ud's generation grew here over time and they formed a tribe. The place where the tribe of Ud had actually settled was a valley which was surrounded with sand dunes. There was a lot of water and rain in that area and it had very good soil. The people of Ud had turned the valley into paradise by very hard work. They had probably created the most beautiful city on earth. They had built buildings with huge marble towers and palaces. There were parks, pools, gardens and wide streets all over the city. They named this beautiful city Irem. The people who lived in Irem were very tall, well-built and strong people. When their strength was doubled by their wealth, it could be said that there was no other tribe on earth superior to them. The power, wealth and the life they had was a blessing for the people. While they should have been thanking Allah, their power and strength had made the people very arrogant and snobbish. They were very snobbish and looked down on the people living in the surrounding areas. Wealth had changed and affected them very much. It is common for people who have abandoned their morals and ethics to use their strength against others. And so the people of the Ud tribe used their strength and wealth to put pressure on the people in the surrounding areas. They were especially fond of mocking travellers who would pass through their city. They would put wrong signs on the roads and would stop and laugh at the confused travellers who had lost their way. They would even sometimes beat and steal from them. They would do all kinds of terrible things and they had no morals either. The bad things that they were doing had made them the kind of people who had no decent morals. They started to believe that Allah was not the one. They stopped worshipping Allah and began to worship the idols that they made themselves. They had forgotten the fact that the Prophet Noah's tribe of idolaters was destroyed for this reason. When their behaviour became even worse, Allah sent the Prophet Hud to the tribe. The Prophet Hud's job was a very difficult one. He was to make the people of the tribe stop worshipping the idols and believe in and worship Allah. He was going to do his best to save these people from their evil ways and turn them into good people. The Prophet Hood's struggle with the tribe. The Prophet Hood knew about the tribe's situation. As soon as he was granted prophethood, he gathered around them and made this statement. Wealthy and powerful people of Irem, I am a messenger sent to you by Allah the Almighty. I am a prophet. Be afraid of Allah and do as I tell you. The tribe of Ud looked at each other in surprise. They weren't expecting to receive such an offer. What do you want from us, Hood? Openly tell us, they replied. The Prophet Hood answered, Only worship Allah. Be afraid of him. Stop worshipping the idols. This is what I ask of you. Those words angered the tribe of Ud, and they replied to Hood by saying, Have you gathered us here just to say this? You are only human like us. How can you be our prophet? We will not stop worshipping the idols our ancestors worshipped. The Prophet Hood gave them this reply, Allah has chosen me as a prophet among you to show you the right way. My duty is to stop you from mocking and torturing other people and stop you from doing unpleasant things. It is also my duty to stop you from worshipping the idols and to ensure you worship Allah. What is so strange about this? The Prophet Hood kept on telling the tribe of Ud these things without losing patience. The tribe couldn't understand the Prophet's struggle. They thought that there must be a material gain from it. They were accusing him of things such as blackmail, madness and turning his back on his ancestors. The Prophet Hood 
gave them all the necessary answers. He was reminding them that he himself was the most trustworthy person among them. Actually, the Prophet Hood was known among the people for his honesty, wit, courage and intellect. Everyone knew and accepted that. Hood kept telling the people the truth without ever feeling down. The people of Ud, who gave importance only to material power and wealth, couldn't understand the reason for Hood's efforts. They still thought that there was some kind of material gain for his efforts. One day they told the Prophet Hood what they thought. The Prophet Hood strongly denied this attack. I do not want any kind of payment or reward from you. My reward comes from Allah. Only Allah can give me my reward. What I ask of you is not for myself, but for your well-being and happiness. He also told the people that if they ignored him and continued to worship idols, then one day they would face Allah's torment. The people of Ad ignored Hood's warning. They asked, Are you threatening us with torment? Who would dare to come up against us? Who can possibly be more superior to us in power and strength? The Prophet Hood replied, Dear people, your Creator Allah has much more power and strength than any of you. Isn't Allah the one who has given you this power and strength you have? If Allah has decided that something bad will happen to you, none of you can prevent that. His strength is enough for anything. The people became even angrier and said, Go and tell your God to give us our punishment. Let's see if his strength is enough. The prophethood was very sad to hear these words. It was necessary for his people to face something bad in order for them to believe in Allah. In this way, maybe their pride would lessen. Maybe this way, they might understand their faults and weaknesses. He kneeled down and prayed to Allah. Dear Allah, let them experience suffering. Allah accepted the prophethood's prayer. The Trap as a punishment to the people for not listening to the Prophet Hood, Allah stopped the rain. The gardens, orchards and fields dried up. The animals fell weak from thirst. The strong and powerful tribe of Ud had now turned into weak and poor people. A dry wind was constantly blowing. The people could barely breathe and their lips dried up. Nothing could be seen for the dust. This went on for three years. During this time, the Prophet Hood continued to tell people his mission. The so-called wise people of the tribe blamed the Prophet Hood for this disaster and put it down to his bad luck. However, things didn't work out as they planned. The Prophet Hood answered all that was asked. He did everything with the help of Allah. Some planning to kill the Prophet were surprised at that. They didn't know what to do. Their plan hadn't worked and they were angry. Dear Hood, what can we say to you? We know that you don't have any bad intentions. However, you have been damned by our idols for cursing them and saying bad things. You have become enraged and for this reason you have done thoughtless things. We have also been cursed by our idols because of you. This is the state we are in. When they couldn't find anything else to say, they started calling the Prophet Hood mad. Hood's reply to this claim was clear. Dear people, may Allah be my witness that the idols that you worship can do neither harm nor good. If they have the power to affect anyone else, then what are they waiting for? They should go ahead and destroy me. The Prophet Hood was openly challenging the idols and their worshippers. He explained the reason for his courage like this. After doing everything that is expected of me, I have put myself into Allah's hands. He has been my witness in everything I have done and will do. I have challenged you and your idols openly, for I have faith and trust in Allah. Faith gives all the courage and strength that is needed to challenge the whole world. The tribe dispersed when they saw their plan hadn't worked out. The famine and drought continued the Prophet Hood was trying to do his duty as best he could. He kept telling the tribe that the disaster that had fallen upon them was only a warning and that if they insisted 
on doing evil things and not following the true path, he informed the people that then they would see true punishment. The people got angry at Hood for the things he said, especially the threats he was making. Eventually, one day they said to him, O oh Hood, do you have nothing else to do but try and keep us away from the idols? We've had enough. End this nonsense and the threats. Aren't you and your words the reason why all this has happened to us? The Prophet Hood had had enough of hearing these words and realised that whatever these people were to face, they had no intention of following the right way. They deserved to be punished a long time ago, but this was being delayed by the Prophet Hood's prayer. When he had no hope left in the people, there was now nothing to stop them from facing torment. The Prophet Hood called to the people one day and said these words, You have shown me from your words that you have fallen into deep evil. From now on, you can wait for the time for a disaster to come and destroy you. I will wait with you. Let's see if the idols you have been worshipping for so many years will save you from this disaster. After the Prophet Hood said these last words to the people, he acted right away. He gathered the believers and took them to some place far away from the city where the idol worshippers were. They started waiting for the disaster that was due to come. The, the wind of fury, Sasar. One day, the tribe of Ad saw a big, dark cloud in the sky. It was heading towards them. They had been suffering a drought for such a long time that as soon as they saw the cloud, they jumped up and down and shouted with excitement. A rain cloud! Our idols have finally shown mercy on us. They've accepted our prayers. In a moment, it will rain on the valley. Our gardens and orchards will get rain. The tribe of Ud was celebrating. Some of them ran up to the fields and started sowing seeds. Some of them went up to the prophet Hood and mocked him. What happened to that threat of yours? Look, our idols have accepted our prayers and sent those black clouds that you can see. In a short time, the rain will start and our troubles will end. Some of them prayed to their idols and some of them expressed their happiness by laughing and having fun. At that moment, the Prophet Hood felt bad when he saw this happiness. He thought of the things that awaited the people. While they were crying in joy, saying, Rain is coming, the Prophet Hood made his last warning. No, you are mistaken. The cloud that you can see is not a rain cloud. That is the wind of wrath, which you thought there was no chance of coming. In a short while, it will destroy you. While you still have time, repent and start believing. While the tribe of Ud was still shouting with joy, the black cloud got even closer to them. Suddenly, a storm erupted. What they thought was a cloud was actually a very fast and cold wind which had never been seen before. It made a terrible sound when it blew. The trees were being torn from their roots. Walls and buildings and huge towers were being knocked down. The people who had boasted, who could be more powerful than us, were now shaking like a leaf before the wind. Some of them wrapped themselves round thick trees and huge rocks. Some of them took refuge in the strong palaces that they were so proud of. However, they couldn't escape from being blown into the sky with the trees and rocks. The strong wind that blew the doors and windows of the houses blew away everything, both living and non-living, like they were dust and made everywhere a complete mess. Some of the people were left under tons of sand and after a while they were uncovered and thrown into the air. Those who were alive screamed madly and tried to escape. However, nothing was of help. This terrible storm continued for seven days and eight nights. People and animals were dead. That beautiful city called Erem was destroyed just like its people. However, the Prophet Hood and his believers escaped without even a scratch. This wind of wrath and terror that had destroyed the tribe is called Sasa in the Quran. The Prophet Hood and about 4,000 of his believers left the city after idolaters were destroyed along with their city. 
They settled in a place near Mecca. The prophet Hood lived there until he passed away. There were lessons to be learnt for the human race from what had happened to the tribe of Ud. The reasons for their destruction were torturing those weaker than themselves, being proud of having such power and strength and looking down on others, using their wealth for bad things and for their pleasure, not believing in Allah, worshipping the idols instead of Allah and choosing the wrong way.